And Larry's joining us right now live from the New York Racing Association. And Larry, the, the crescendo of your call served two purposes. One, it exhibited the emotion of a Triple Crown winner. And two, you had to get that loud just to get over the crowd. Yeah, it was pretty loud here, that's for sure. Uh, it was definitely loud, but I, I had a pair of headsets on and my, my own voice cranked in them. So uh, even though I heard them, it was it was more of the, uh, the first part of that, the overwhelming emotion that, that this moment has finally happened after this 37-year wait. And, uh, and that I got to, to narrate it. it it's, just a, it's just an unbelievable feeling. You know, the thing I love about it, though, is that, you know, on, on your interviews afterwards and then on your tweets and stuff, the, the perspective is coming more as a race fan, not necessarily the race caller, the voice of New York Racing Association, the guy who got to call the Triple Crown. Really what comes through is how much of a fan you are and what this means to you as a fan first, as someone who loves this great game of ours. Well, I, I first started going to the racetrack when I was like 15, 16 years old, and I'm 48 right now, and I've been calling races. In fact, uh, the day before the Belmont was 30 years of uh, calling races to that day, and uh, and just just the the total unbelievable feeling of of having seen this in person that you know I, that none of us had seen in 37 years, and, and it, it was just an, an overwhelming experience, and and it's also just a an amazing sense of relief at the end that uh, you know that I was able to get through it and 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 have it come out the way I wanted it to. You've you know you've been in a lot of announcers' booths. Uh, how, how are you settling into things there uh, at Belmont Park? You're doing a, obviously an excellent job, but just take us through the last uh, month or so getting settled in being the Naira announcer. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, this is such a, an historic place and. And it's it's a, a somewhat different place to call because the track is so huge of being a mile and a half around and getting adjusted to like a jockey has to to the different poles and different positions and there's so many races start in so many different places here mm -hmm. but uh, I'm having a lot of fun uh, no doubt about it here at Belmont Park and uh, and really looking forward next to Saratoga which is just going to be uh, an incredible experience in itself. Now it, it was it was a tough decision I'm sure but one that. You basically said that you would ultimately make. You, you took the job at Churchill, which is an historic job a couple of years ago, and a job that every track announcer dreams of. And it was on your mind at that point. You had said that the only job you would ever turn Churchill down for was New York. What is it about New York specifically? Is it just because that's you know closer to where you're from, or is it just a circuit you've always been fascinated with? But what was it about New York specifically? Because by that decision, you end up calling the first Triple Crown winner in 37 years. So a very fateful decision and a circuitous route from, uh, you know, your, your days as a track announcer in 1985 at, at Bowie Downs. What was it about New York that was just so fascinating? Well, I, as, as compared to Churchill Downs, I mean, the, to, to put it bluntly, there's a lot more racing dates in New York available. Churchill doesn't run as many dates. And so uh, Belmont Park and, and one month at Aqueduct in Saratoga just added up better for me. And, and on top of that, uh, to me, New York racing is the is the pinnacle, uh, especially the Saratoga meet, and uh, and add to the fact that because I work for NBC, uh, even though I was leaving Churchill Downs, I would still be able to call the Kentucky Derby, which uh, which really made that decision and pretty easy for me. And uh, I tell you what, I loved working at Churchill Downs. I really fell in love with the city of Louisville. It was a terrific place to live. And uh, after uh, some of these commutes uh, of driving around here in New York, you, you, you sometimes think, oh, man, I wish I was in Louisville. <laughs> but I'm having a lot of fun here at, uh, at Belmont Park. And it's, it's, it's a terrific place to work. And, and Saratoga is going to be even better. Well, you've spent uh, so many years at Monmouth as well, so you're somewhat familiar with the uh, New Jersey, New York area. Are you settled in, settled in yet in the city, or what's your what's your commute like these days? <laughs> I actually still live right by Monmouth Park, to be honest with you. So I, that's a I'm drive. Yeah, I'm five minutes away from Monmouth and about two hours away from Belmont some days. Uh, today was a, a pretty much a rough commute, but two days a week I have been staying over at, uh, at a local hotel on Thursday and Friday night so that I don't have to do the commute each and every day. So I basically commute three days a week and stay over a couple days a week. And I guess eventually I'll move over here, but for the time being, I'm uh, doing it this way. So looking forward, Saratoga's right around the corner. You still have some great racing uh, left at Belmont in this meet. You have that fall meet at Belmont Park, which is one of the best meets year in and year out. 
It's hard to top uh, a Triple Crown winner, but you were back at work 45 minutes after the Belmont Stakes doing what you do best and calling races, and the show always goes on. I know you got to call race a day, but looking forward to the summer. What are you looking forward to most? And after such an exciting weekend, what's going to get your blood pumping once again as we head into uh, some of the great days of racing in 2015? Well, there's a few things to look forward to for sure. I mean, I look forward to coming to work every day first and foremost, but uh, uh, we've got, of course, the Stars and Stripes Festival coming up here with some fantastic races, 4th of July weekend at Belmont. Uh, to be honest with you, the, the, the one thing that I'm really looking forward to the most is opening day at Saratoga. It's something that uh, that I've dreamed about being a part of for years and years, and, and Tom Durkin always had that great tradition of having the fans say they're off at Saratoga for the first race of the meet, and I'm going to continue to do that because I think it's extremely cool. And uh, and that whole place where there's a big crowd every day and the, the entire city is into horse racing, it's just going to be a tremendous experience to, to be the voice of Saratoga, something I can't wait. And then the other thing that I keep thinking about and, you know, knock on wood that, that he stays healthy and, and that everything's going to be great is, is the opportunity to call the, the Breeders' Cup this year at Keeneland and with the, the prospect of American Pharaoh most likely ending his career in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, that's going to be a, an incredible experience as well. All right, we're going to ask you one more question before we let you go because we know you got another job to do and call the races today at Belmont. But we know you practiced that race call what was your backup phrase if it what if american pharaoh didn't do it did you have something planned to say if he didn't win the triple crown yeah nothing really specifically i you know i i sort of planned out what i wanted to do if it was a clear-cut win and i thought about it if it was going to be kind of close what i might have to do to to you know cut that back a little bit maybe edit it down uh but in the uh in the uh, idea of him getting beat uh probably just something like uh you know the triple crown denied once again or something to that effect that uh, but uh i hadn't really thought of it too much uh on that side of things and uh, thank goodness uh, we didn't have to worry about it larry thank you so much for joining us and we appreciate um your availability to us and a fantastic race call one of the best race calls we've ever heard a uh, race called befitting a triple crown champion and uh Wish you the best in your continued success at the New York Racing Association. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot, and thanks for uh, having me on. All right, Larry. Uh, Larry Colmus, and uh, that race call will live on uh, forever. And it's it's truly, I mean, he really did. He encamp. It's so hard to do. People don't realize it's so hard to do to encapsulate the moment uh, the way he did. But he did it perfectly. It, it was a brilliant call, and that's going to go down. That call, in, you know, hand in hand with the Triple Crown victory, one of the great sports moments of the year.